One of the overarching questions of this class is how do we take modern life and rewind it back to understand something about the origins of life? How do we take existing composition, structure, and function of modern life and use it to learn something about the origins of life? It's clear that what we should do in that process is to focus on the most common features across all of life. And one of those features is the central dogma of molecular biology. And what the central dogma states is how all of life shares a common way to go from genetic information to functional proteins. In more detail, what's happening is that DNA is being copied into the next generation, whether that's in unicellular or multicellular um, organisms. Um, it's taking this double-stranded st structure of DNA and copying that into a similar version for the next generation. During the course of a life cycle, of a bacterium or a multicellular organism, this DNA is being read off into RNA, which is then fed through a very complicated molecular machine known as the ribosome to form functional proteins. These proteins then go on to do most of the rest of, of the cellular functionality um, and cellular physiology. Taking a more detailed look, what our interest really is, is how do we go from some putative origin of life to formalizing this very complicated um, and beautiful and elegant way of storing information um, and encoding functionality to the evolution of greater complexity, both uh, first in single cell bacteria and then in single cell eukaryotes and eventually multicellular organisms. Taking a more detailed look at the central dogma, what we have is a double-stranded structure of DNA formed by single nucleotides that are paired to each other, A to T, G to C, um, where this pairing is always the same basis paired to each other in this double helix structure. And what was found um, in the second half of the last century was that when you put three of these nucleotides together, life is able to encode um, genetic information or functional information via what's called codons, which are just these specific triplets um, of these nucleotides paired together. So at the bottom, you can see DNA with a paired triplet, uh, also known as a codon, across these two strands. And what happens in the overall process of um, encoding this information or translating this information into functional protein is that first the information is transcribed into mRNA strings. Um, so these are just strings of messenger mRNA, which are just RNA, which is a slightly different set of nucleotides from the DNA, being copied off one to one um, from the DNA. And then this mRNA string, which again has um, these codons um, in the same sort of way um, where one codon in the DNA becomes one codon in the mRNA, this then gets fed through this machine known as the ribosome. So this mRNA tape is being pulled through the ribosome, and as it's pulled through codon by codon um, through the ribosomal structure, it gets paired with tRNA. And tRNA means transfer RNA. These are short segments of RNA that are attached to um, specific amino acids. So each amino acid gets paired um, with a set of tRNA, um, that is with a set of codons, and then these tRNA come in and match the same codon in the mRNA string, um, locking in place one amino acid um, into the ribosome. When that amino acid is locked into the ribosome, it is polymerized into a growing chain um, of, of attached amino acids. And as those amino acid, as that amino acid chain comes out of the ribosome, it starts to fold up into a functional protein. And so this is the entire process from going from uh, DNA um, to a functional protein. Now, uh, as I mentioned, this overall process um, is conserved through most of life. Um, and Later in this course, we'll talk about how um, mRNA and tRNA um, is thought to have evolved over the course of life. And we'll even talk about how DNA um, settled on a single genetic code. But here I want to focus in on this ribosome uh, because it is one of the most conserved structures across all of life. Work out of Lauren Williams' lab has shown that the ribosome is really this beautiful onion structure. So what you have is this common core shared by all of organisms. Um, that through the course of evolution has had these large um, units added onto the outside of it, um, forming this larger and larger structure. So Williams argues that because of this onion structure, you can even rewind the tape um, 
of life to understand how this ribosome evolved in terms of the particular RNA and, and protein structures. Um, their, perhaps their function in a particular context, and then how over time there was this accretion process to build up this very complicated um, device of the ribosome. As I mentioned, the ribosome is shared by all of life, and what we typically see in all forms of life is that you have this same common, um, say, bacterial ribosome with added decorations on the outside, um, but basically it's effectively conserved. And so it's so unchanging and conserved across most of life that it's a very nice way to do phylogenetics, which is the idea that Carl Woese um, realized in the 70s and used it to define a new tree of life or propose a new tree of life. So what he found is that compared to more complicated trees of life from this uh, ribosomal phylogenetics perspective, what we really see is three branches, archaea, bacteria, and eukarya, where the thinking and main proposition at the current moment is that archaea and bacteria came together um, to form uh, eukaryotic life.